In this video, we'll go over how to configure your IN100 to interface with an I squared C sensor and read the data from it. We'll also configure the IN100 tag to advertise out the I squared C sensor measurements that we are reading from the sensor. So let's get started. So the IN100 provides the capability to connect up to three I squared C slave devices or peripherals. Now to configure an I squared C device, navigate to the I squared C tab here on the left side of the Nano Beacon config tool. As you can see here, there are three slaves available to be enabled and configured. Let's go ahead and enable slave number one just to go in and see what kind of settings we have. So the first setting we have is the pins and this defines where the SCL line and the SDA lines are going to be connected on the GPIOs of the IN100. We have the address mode, whether it's seven bit or 10 bit. We have the I squared C speed and those are there are two options there, 100 kilobits per second or 400 kilobits per second. Then we have the slave address. This would be the address defined by the manufacturer and assigned for the device. Then we have the read data storage settings. This includes the memory address and offset, which are hard coded and automatically set by the application. And then we have the length setting, which defines the buffer size that will store the data that's read from the I squared C device. Once the buffer is filled, it will roll over and overwrite the the bytes from the beginning of the buffer. If we go into I squared C commands, here we have a few different commands available. The first one is the I squared C read. It already includes the save address and the memory of read. We just need to supply the number of bytes to be read. The next one we have is the write. This is the bytes to be written in hex format. Already the command will autofill the slave address and then it will just have to include, we'll just have to include the data. We don't need to include the length, it will figure that out. The data bytes uh, have to be separated by commas. The third command that we have is a combined write, stop, and read command. For convenience sake, this will allow you to activate and operate all these three commands in one go by just adding one, one line in the commands list. The final one here is the delay, and this is in microseconds. And then below the command, we have the execute I squared C command when cold boot or one warm boot. So we have a checklist here that we can enable for each command to tag it to be run during cold boot, which means after power on of the device. And warm boot is basically after the wake up from sleep. We can delete commands, we can add the command. So if we want to read one byte, we can set that here. We can add the address and send it and that will insert or add a command to the list. We can insert delays as well. You can insert multiples. You can go ahead and in here delete or insert command in the middle. So I can insert a, a wait over here. So this is it in terms of the commands that are available. Now that we've covered the basics of the I squared C configuration in the Nano Beacon config tool, Let's take a look at the sensor we'll be using for the exercise, and it's the Sensirian SHT40, which is a temperature and humidity sensor. So this is the temperature sensor, the breakout board for the sensor, the SHT40. This is from Adafruit, and you can purchase it online and use that with the IN100. Just need to solder the header pins on it, and then you're good to go. So when working with a sensor in I squared C, the most important reference is the data sheet for that sensor. So in the data sheet, you'll find a lot of useful information specifically with the I squared C commands. So you'll find a section usually with I squared C commands telling you what are the different commands that you can use for reading the data, what, need, what can be configured for the sensor, as well as some of the timing and delays that are required between commands. Basically, all the important information that you need to interface with the sensor correctly. When working with I squared C, I like to use a handy tool called the I squared C driver. It's available for purchase online for around $30. And the tool lets you test out and monitor the communication with an I squared C sensor and really makes it very easy to figure out the commands, the timing, look at the sensor data and make sense out of it without having to interface from a microcontroller and write programs in order to do that. It comes with a Python GUI that can be run on your PC to perform all the necessary tasks. So to read data from the SHT40 sensor, it's pretty simple. We just have to send 
one of the commands and then wait and then read the data. Read six bytes, that will give us 16 byte bit of read data for each. So each one, two bytes will be for the temperature followed by a CFC and then two bytes for the relative humidity followed by a CRC as well. The different commands are defined here in the data sheet. We'll be using the FD command, which measures the temperature and relative humidity with high precision and high repeatability. So let's try this out with the I squared C driver. I have it here showing the, this is the tool, the hardware tool itself. And then I also have the application running on Mac OS. So this is a Python application with a GUI and it's as simple as sending the FD command. Make sure you select the address of the I squared C device that's connected, the SHT40 breakout board from Adafruit, hit right, and then we read six bytes. The first two bytes are the temperature reading and then the third byte is the CRC and then we have the fourth and fifth bytes are relative humidity reading and then the sixth byte is the CRC for that data. So as you can see here I've got 6C DB and then 85 DA. Let's take a look at how to convert this from the data sheet. So this is what the equations look like for both the relative humidity as well as a temperature both in Celsius and Fahrenheit. So let's go back and look at the values that we got. We have 6C DB. So I'm going to convert this to decimal. Then we take that number and I'm going to use this online calculator where you can define the equation with one variable and define the value of that variable. So if I plug in the temperature, this is the Celsius temperature what we'll get is 29.4 Celsius. So that's the temperature reading. If we switch to the relative humidity and go and calculate the value, let's take a look at the value again. It's 85 DA, 85 DA, convert that to decimal and then plug that in in this equation and we get 59.35% relative humidity. So that's as simple as it is. You can use this tool to test out different measurements. The FD command measures the temperature and relative humidity with high precision and high repeatability. This is according to the specification from Sensirian for the SHT40. Okay, now we'll just go ahead and switch over to NanoBeacon config tool and configure the I squared C commands to match what we saw here in order to get this to work with the IN100 board. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and configure NanoBeacon config tool to include an interface with the I squared C sensor, the Sensirian SHT40, which measures the temperature and relative humidity, as well as including that data in the advertising packets. So the first thing we wanna do is go to I squared C and enable slave number one want to make sure that the slave address matches the Sensarian slave address, the I squared C address, and that's 44 in hex. We select keep these as default. We're going to be connecting the SCL line to GPIO3, the SDA to GPIO2. The address mode is 7 bits, and the I squared C we're operating at 100 kilobits per second. And finally, the read data storage setting, since we want to read six bytes without overwriting these bytes, we're gonna create a buffer of six bytes. So that's set here, and then we go into the I squared C commands. So again, the simple command is sending the FD, and that's for the high precision and high repeatability measurement. So the first thing we wanna do is add an I squared C write. We're gonna do this on cold boot and warm boot. And we're just going to send FD. We add that to the list of commands. And then the next command is we're going to write six bytes. We're going to read six bytes. So this, the maximum that we can read in one go with one command is five bytes. So what we're going to do is we're going to read one byte and add it six times. Okay, and then we're just gonna go ahead and delete these nulls in between the reads. And leave the last one. 
that's as simple as it is. It's just sending the FD and we actually forgot to add a delay. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a delay after this. And let's just wait for 10 milliseconds, which is uh, 10,000 microseconds. So I'm going to insert it here. So now it's going to send that command and wait for 10 milliseconds and then send the reads, the six byte reads. That's it for configuring the I squared C. Next, we'll go to the advertising. I'm going to enable just one advertising set. Go in here. I'm going to choose custom, define the device name to say the IN100. And then I'm going to include the manufacturer specific data. I'm going to look for the I squared C slave number one read data. Offset is zero. And then we have six bytes. Append to data, hit OK. And then just view the raw advertising, make sure everything looks good. And then I'm going to hit OK. Remember with I squared C, we cannot run in RAM. Instead, we have to actually burn and program the IN100. So make sure that you have. You double check everything and make sure that it is correctly configured before you hit the burn or program button because once you do that, the IN100 tag, the eFuse is burnt and there is no way to restore it or change the configuration from there on. Okay, so for this test, I actually have a header board that we created to incorporate the SHT40 and it plugs right on top of the IN100 for convenience, but you can use the breakout board and connect the wires to the specific headers that are needed, the GPIO2, GPIO3, as well as the VCC or VBAT and the ground pin. So once I have it, I have already burned this with the application that we just configured with the configuration, and I'm gonna go ahead and scan on the Android NRF Connect app and filter for IN100 and look at the values there. So here I have the mobile app and I'm gonna hit scan and we can see here the device and we can see the raw data and it's changing based on the temperature reading and the CRC and the relative humidity and its CRC as well. So if we take a look at and go back to this calculator, based on the data sheet, I plugged in the equation, the correct equation for the temperature in Celsius if I take a look here, it's around C, 6C8D. Let's take that value. So 6C8D, and we need to convert that first into decimal. Convert that to decimal, copy the value, and then plug it into this equation. And we get around 29.2 Celsius. If we take a look at the relative humidity, we're going to convert that as well from hex to decimal. And that would be the third byte or the fourth byte in this. So 6C, A9, and then 0B, and then it's 93, and then let's take 92FF, for example. So 92FF, convert that to decimal. I'm gonna copy that value, plug it into the relative humidity equation based on the data sheet. Once I plug that in, I get 65.77. So that's it in terms of configuring your IN100 to support interfacing with an I squared C device. In this video, we went over how to interface it with the SHT40 from Sensorian. It should be simple enough to follow along the same path to configure it to interface with any other I squared C sensor. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.